hey guys welcome to another problem solving video yeah and this problem is from mathematical reflections also method ORZ and this problem will involve some properties of trigonal functions which we will discuss uh, later when we have to use that okay so for now uh, how do we begin the problem so basically we see that the denominator can be simplified if we multiply by 1 plus x yeah so basically whatever seems good we will go with that and this seems good for now now uh, if we multiply we get the integral from 0 to 1 x to the power 3 by 2 ln x and then 1 plus sorry 1 plus x and this is a plus b a square minus a plus b square that is 1 plus x cube dx yeah so now the next step can be uh, to just multiply these expressions we have x to the power 3 by 2 plus x to the power 5 by 2 ln x by 1 plus x cube now let's simplify denominator again yeah and how can we do that if we let y as x cube this simplification will help us yeah basically we have y to the power 1 by 3 is equals to x and 1 by 3 y to the power minus 2 by 3 dy equals to dx if we use that now we get uh, integral from 0 to 1 uh, x to the power 1 not x sorry y y to the power 1 by 2 plus y to the power 5 by 6 and ln of y to the power 1 by 3 so 1 by 3 ln of y now this is 1 by y and dx is again 1 by 3 y to the power minus 2 by 3 dy okay now next uh, next thing we can do is we basically have 1 by 1 plus y over here yeah basically we can use geometric series for this expression because uh, y is going from 0 to 1 so obviously the modulus of one y, y is less than 1 so we can use geometric series and so we have 1 by 9 integral from 0 to 1 y to the power 1 by 2 plus y to the power 5 by 6 and then ln of y and we also have y to the power minus 2 by 3 and then sum going from n equals to 0 to infinity minus y to the power n dy basically the first term is 1 and the ratio is minus y okay so now we can change the sum and integral yeah because these are all lost are constants this can be taken inside the sum and then uh, using dominated convergence theorem we can exchange them yeah now uh, this is just okay so we have ln of y and then minus one one to the power n yeah now uh, y to the power n and then uh, three by six minus four by six okay so y to the power n minus one by six plus over here this is uh, five by six minus y so y to the power n plus one by six dy okay so now at this point uh, we need a modified gamma function like we have a modified gamma function over here so basically integral from 0 to 1 of ln of y and y to the power n minus 1 by 6 this one is the modified gamma function yeah and so basically if you want to see how gamma function involves here you can basically let g equals to minus ln of y but for now I will directly with the formula. So integral from 0 to 1 of ln x to the power n x to the power m dx. If you want to solve this integral, it will just be minus 1 to the power n gamma n plus 1 by m plus 1 to the power n plus 1. Okay. So we'll use this formula. And that gives us 1 by 9, so I'm going from n equals to 0 to infinity, yeah. minus 1 to the power n, 
and now this will be minus 1 to the power 1 gamma 2 by n plus 5 by 6 whole square similarly over here it's minus 1 to the power 1 gamma 2 by n plus 7 by 6 whole square okay so now we have 1 by 9 so I'm going from n equals to 0 to infinity minus 1 to the power n plus 1 now yeah and then okay and then we have uh, 1 by n plus 5 by 6 whole square yeah plus write it thicker plus uh, 1 by n plus 7 by 6 whole square okay now after this uh, we have to use trigonal function after this yeah now let me introduce you to trigonal function this is the right time basically trigonal function is just the derivative of digamma function yeah trigamma function is just the derivative of uh, digamma function and we know that digamma function of 1 plus x is just negative of polar constant plus sum going from n equals to 1 to infinity 1 by n minus 1 by n plus x so now for trigamma just differentiate this expression so we have trigamma function of 1 plus x as this goes to 0 because if we differentiate with respect to x this is just constant 1 by n is also constant and what we have is this thing 1 by n plus x whole square after differentiation and now uh, if we take this sum from 0 to infinity what we have is n plus 1 plus x whole square now there's x plus 1 there's x plus 1 so we can replace that by z digamma dash of z is equals to sum from n equals to 0 to infinity 1 by n plus z whole square so this is our new nice definition and uh, I would like you to remember this formula now other formula that I would like you to remember is the res the reflection formula so basically we have this formula in digamma function yeah now if we differentiate this formula we will have diagram of 1 minus g plus diagram of g as pi square cosec square pi g you can check that yourself that is easy now beyond this we also need another formula so we already have one new formula two new formula and the third one is like this so basically in diagram we have oh sorry i forgot to give trigram over here trigamma sorry sorry for that now another formula that we need is basically in diagramma we have diagramma of 1 plus x as diagramma of x plus 1 by x now if we differentiate this we have trigamma of 1 plus x as trigamma of x minus 1 by x square so these three formulas will come handy in some time yeah so basically that's why you have to know these formulas to solve this problem and yeah after you have known this after you have known these formulas we are good to continue the problem solving and the problem is we have the alternating sign over here yeah so that is a problem so now what would you do in this situation so let me let me show you what we can do so basically let us say we have a sum going from n equals to 0 to infinity of minus 1 to the power n and then f of n yeah so in this situation uh, what we can do is we can just let us let us see what happens basically when n is 0 we have okay n plus 1 minus f of 0 when n is 1 we have plus f of 1 
minus f of 2 plus f of 3 yeah so what we can do is we can group them minus f of 0 minus f of 1 sorry mi 2 minus f of 4 yeah and then plus f of 1 plus f of 3 we can do this yeah so that's why a proper way uh, we can write this sum is minus sum from n equals to 0 to infinity of f of 2n plus sum from n equals to 0 to infinity of f of 2n plus 1 that is what we are going to do so that now after doing this uh, those a uh, sum will not have the alternating signs and then we can use the digamma function so trigamma function we can write this as minus sum going from n equals to 0 to infinity of 1 by 2n plus 5 by 6 whole square plus 1 by 2n plus 7 by 6 whole square and then we have minus over here now plus plus sum going from n equals to 0 to infinity of now I have to write 2n plus 1 over here so that means 1 by 2n plus 11 by 6 whole square plus 1 by 2n plus 13 by 6 whole square okay now but uh, but in this way we might not be able to use trigonal function because for trigonal function we need to have n plus g whole square not 2n plus g whole square that's why we have to make n over here and for that we have to take 1 by for common so we have 1 by 36 minus of sum going from n equals to 0 to infinity 1 by n plus 5 by 12 whole square plus 1 by n plus 7 by 12 whole square yeah and then a plus sign sum going from n equals to 0 to infinity of 1 by n plus 11 by 12 whole square plus 1 by n plus 13 by 12 whole square okay now we can use the di trigamma function yeah so basically the trigamma using trigamma function we can then use reflection property so that's how it's helpful otherwise like just putting it in notation doesn't help it he doesn't really do a great help but the thing over here is we have some reflection properties in such other things that is gonna help us simplify the result yeah and this is trigamma not digamma i'm sorry for that okay trigamma 13 by 12 okay so now now we try to basically use the reflection property yeah so we can see that this thing over here is basically trigamma 5 by 12 plus trigamma of 1 minus 5 by 12 yeah but over here uh, this here is 11 by 12 so we don't have 1 minus 11 by 12 over here but we can make that how if you ask me this thing over here is just basically sorry trigamma of 1 plus 1 by 12 yeah so that's how that's why we can write this as trigamma of 1 by 12 plus 1 by 1 by 12 whole square yeah so this is just uh, not plus it's minus trigamma of 1 by 12 minus 144 and then this is just 1 minus 1 by 12 so that's how it's helpful so we have trigamma of 1 minus 1 by 12 plus trigamma of 1 by 12 
minus 144 okay so now we are almost at the end of this movie I think this solution was almost as long as a short movie, not a full movie. Now this is pi square, cosec square, 5 pi by 12. And this one is pi square, cosec square, pi by 12. And this is minus 144. Yeah. Now divide by 36. Yeah, that gives us pi square common out. Cosec square pi by 12 minus cosec square pi pi by 12. Yeah. By 36 minus uh, 4. Yeah. Now to find the value of these trigonometric ratios, we have two ways. Either to use the sub angle formulas, yeah, but that will be somehow complicated and messy and takes a long time. But that's not uh, that's not impossible. Okay, so to use the sub angle formulas is not an impossible task. Basically, you can also do that if you are a high schooler. But me, I, I will use calculator. Yeah. So, if I use calculator to find this expression, what will I get? Mm, let me put this in my calculator. Mm, so, was this just for some time? I have to press this. Okay. So, 1 by... Uh, sine pi by 12 whole square minus 1 by and then sine so wait 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 1 by sine ok 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 so 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 one by sine five into one of g by two whole square. Now the answer is eight root three. Yeah. So basically the answer is eight root three by thirty six minus four. Now this is pi square or uh, root 3 by what is this mm, let me write 2 and 9 minus 4 so this is pi square by 2 pi square by 3 root 3 minus 4 is this the answer 2 pi square by 3 root 3 minus 4 yeah this is the answer uh, I check this ans answer from all frame alpha so yeah basically solve the problem the problem was somehow long because it's from a reputed journal as well yeah but yeah it, it was not impossible though <laughs> because we were able to do it together you just uh, needed some properties from trigamma function yeah just those equivalent properties to diagamma reflection definition and the sum formulas and so if we have talk about flow we just first simplify denominator and then used infinite series and then gamma function and trigamma function and then reflection formula of trigamma function and it was solved yeah hope you enjoyed the solution thanks for watching and look forward to seeing in upcoming videos where we will solve similar other problems yeah this was it uh, be happy and keep solving problems.